Okay, what's up guys? So, I know you're probably thinking like, oh, you're shirtless again, but like, genuinely, whenever I do these shirtless, I just get more views. So, if you guys want me shirtless, I will do it shirtless. I've honestly not even gotten a chance to look at these questions yet myself, so you're gonna get like, the raw and real answers for me. This is not like, pre-stage, I didn't look at the questions yet, and like, think about my answer ahead of time, so whatever my answer is, this is the genuine and brutally honest answer, which I know you guys like that I'm more on the honest side. I'm definitely like extremely honest and straightforward. So uh, if you guys like this video, please leave a like. Um, you know, subscribe if you wanna see more videos and let me know what you wanna see in the comments. First thing you do in the morning. First thing I do in the morning is either fastest cardio <laughs> or um, if I don't do fast cardio, I make my breakfast honestly because for me, um, fasting, like when you sleep, you fast pretty much. That's you're not eating for a specific amount of time. So if I, um, if I first wake up and I don't have fast cardio, then I'm eating and I'm not eating. The first thing I do is cardio and then eat. So either of those two. This is your height. I'm about like 5'5". Five five. I'm really not like a tall guy. Um, that's why I want to do 212 also because um, Originally, I was thinking of doing classic physique, but there are a lot of taller guys that do that, and I just feel like even if you have a certain amount of muscle mass, it's just like the high proportions they'll do kind of they get washed out. Um, and that being said, I will you know I've always loved the 212 look, and um, you know some of my favorite bodybuilders are 212 guys. So I'm I'm definitely on the shorter guys, shorter side guys. Like I'm five five. You don't have to be super tall for this sport, honestly. So if you're on the shorter side and you want to do this sport and you're nervous that like you can't like you definitely can where did where did or do you get the most confidence in your body throughout your journey honestly you kind of have to learn to be confident in yourself regardless of your body because you can there's plenty of people that look amazing but they have absolutely no confidence like confidence should not be dictated by what you look like and i know it's like so cliche and whatever um but for me it's honestly comes from just the hard work that i put in myself every day that gives me like a sense of personal respect you know and i think that's honestly for me the most i've got out of bodybuilding is all the work i put into it i've developed a lot of self-respect for myself and that's not saying in a cocky like a cocky sense but it's just you know i look at what i've done and i'm like wow you know what like i deserve a pat on the back and that that being said i'm not gonna start slacking because of that but definitely you know try and find confidence through other factors other than just physical appearance do it through work ethic and Things of that nature. How old are you? I am 19. How do you go about tanning? I'm afraid of turning out orange. Honestly, I just sound so bad, but I either go to the beach or my backyard and I literally just marinate and I sit there in the sun. And I, I will put that like tanning lotion on and I just let it happen. Um, I have Romanian and I'm primarily Romanian, German and Greek, so I I'm not so much the German, but the Greek and the Romanian we tan easily, and I don't really burn. Um, that being said, I use the tanning bed a lot pre-show, before my show. So when your body gets used to tanning for a while, it's kind of like, um, it doesn't get so shocked and I don't really burn or get orange. So I really can't help you there. I'm very sorry. I love bodybuilding, but I know it's draining. What do you do in your spare time, hobbies, etc.? Honestly, I love bodybuilding. For me, it's really not that draining. When I'm not training or getting my meals ready, I'm working with my clients, um, working with my clients. Yeah, I like to drum, um, so I'll practice my drumming. Uh, you know, I'm always constantly researching things about bodybuilding just because for personal knowledge and um, for, again, like my clients and things of that nature. So I always am trying to get better and better in the sport. So for me, it kind of is a very all-consuming thing. Uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, I, like, I love to hang out with my friends, um, but Overall, like bodybuilding has become like my lifestyle, and I don't really plan to change that. If you're a band or musician, I listen to everything, guys. I literally listen to, I pick and choose from every genre. When I work out, I pretty much primarily listen to like metal or rap, but I, but I definitely wouldn't like. I, there are even some country songs I like, so I really can't give you an answer for that. I'm sorry. I really listen to everything. I have to lose belly fat while keeping the muscle same as. That's all about. Well, first off, belly fat, to lose belly fat, that's being in a caloric deficit. But then when you get to more of the nitty gritty details, it's having a high protein intake because that will, you know, be more muscle sparing. Um, I personally, you know, there's different coaches and different protocols, 
but definitely high protein and then you know the manipulation of fats and carbs is very highly debated but um, carbs are protein sparing in the sense that you'll if your body let's say you're working out right the first source that your body will go to unless you're in ketosis is carbs it won't go to protein so um, I don't, well, to put it simply I would do a higher protein moderate carb lower fat just because fats are also um, like the most calorically dense uh, on rest days I'd usually uh, increase fats for hor hormone regulation but definitely at least what I've done in the past and what's worked for me the best is like carb cycling um, and but overall just high protein keep that protein up and that's your best bet on keeping your muscle while losing fat. How do I fit cardio into my routine without losing mass? I feel like some people are so scared of cardio, like you're gonna immediately step on the cardio machine and lose all your muscle. That's not how it works. Uh, cardio is just a tool. Honestly, you can lose fat without cardio. You can, um, I like it. I like it faster in the morning just to wake up my digestive system. And it's just like a great way to start your day. Like, oh, you just woke up and you already did something productive, you know? Um, and also post-workout, like I'm so drained, like I just want to eat, like my body has nothing left in it, so unless I'm like getting ready for a show, I always do my cardio fasted. Um, it's being in a caloric surplus, like if you're trying to put on muscle while doing cardio, cardio will just help. It's also good for your health and your heart, so um, I think people have a lot of misconception about cardio, and I'm not saying do it every day for two hours, but you know, three, four times a day, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, I, like, I like it fasted, some people disagree with me. Um, but get it in there and it's good for you and it'll honestly help keep you leaner. You get veins on your lower stomach. Diet. <laughs> Is there a specific part of your body that you want to work on more than others? Yes, my traps. My traps have like always for me been my lagging body part. I've really tried everything, good form and everything. Um, I think it's just more of a genetic placement of me. Uh, which is totally fine, maybe it's just gonna take longer. So definitely I want to bring up my traps and just overall mass. Like, as simple as that, I just want to bring my mass up on my body because I want to be competitive in the big boys league, so. How many years ago did you start fitness? Uh, three and a half. How often do you work out a week? Right now I'm training five days a week, three days on, rest day, two days on, rest day. Is it optimal to eat during a diet? Uh, this question is very vague, but you should, you know, to be in a positive hormonal balance and to get the most out of your metabolism, you should be eating smaller, more frequent meals. So you should be having, a, you know, that. Well, I don't believe in intermittent fasting. I mean, it works for some people, but overall, what's worked the best for me? Because I've intermittent fast in the past, and like before, I got like an actual coach, and I looked so bad. Um, but uh, I would definitely say five to six meals a day, smaller, even and evenly distribute your proteins, your fats. Uh, carbs a little higher, breakfast and around the workout, because that's when you really need it the most. Um, and yeah, you should be eating actually more, but less in each meal. At the beginning, how did you manage to get food down as a smaller kid? Honestly, guys, I have a ginormous appetite. Whenever I get this question, I feel kind of bad because I've never actually experienced feeling extremely full. Um, I could always eat more. I know that sounds so bad, but genuinely, like, pretty sure if I entered like a food eating competition, I, I could easily, without any proper training, get within the like, top five which I know is like a statement, but anyone that knows me personally would probably back that statement up. Uh, that being said, just eat more calorically dense foods. Like, you know, don't skip the egg whites, go to whole eggs. Um, eat, like for carbs, bagels are really high, high in calories, easy to get down. You see a lot of bodybuilders eating rice, like white rice, because it's easy to digest and pretty calorically dense. Pasta, great. A lot of the bigger bodybuilders will eat pasta. So you just gotta choose foods that are calorically dense, like almonds, peanuts, like, a handful is easily 200 calories, no, like no problem. So it's just food choice, and you know you want to keep it healthy for um, different. Like I could get into a whole video on why you should be eating healthy even when you're trying to bulk, but that would be a whole video in itself. If you want to see that though, let me know in the comments. But just choose more calorically dense foods. What do you think about having a relationship? Would it distract you too much? Um, right now in my life, I'm pretty happy being single. Um, I have a lot, like honestly, very recently that just started to ha like come into my life like when it comes to career wise and like my future so I'm definitely not looking for anything right now um that being said like I really I'm not someone that is going out of my way to look for a relationship or totally you know like if I met someone that I really liked I wouldn't just be like no like I'm not going in a relationship because you know for whatever like I kind of just go with the flow whatever happens um 
it happens, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna be going out of my way to look for a relationship, I'm also not gonna go out of my way to avoid a relationship, if that makes sense. Still doing the reverse diet, so I'm pretty much, yeah, I still technically am, but we're getting higher in calories now. My metabolism have de have, has definitely um, woken up. I definitely, we've increased the calories. So, but yes, to answer your question briefly, I am still my reverse diet. Working on fat loss, but want to start bodybuilding must do's. Honestly, if you're just starting bodybuilding and you want to lose fat, you can look into a body recomposition because when you're so new to training, your body will have a, like your, what, your, what your body's gonna do is it's gonna displace the fat with muscle because you're so new to training. So I would definitely take the time to look into a uh, body recomposition involving weight training. Is it bad to do full body workouts five days in a row? Yes, you are not gonna recover that way. Please don't do that. Find a better split. <laughs> How do you lean bulk after 60 pound weight loss? Wow, first off, congrats if you've done that. I would say uh, look into reverse dieting. So right now your metabolism is probably not too hot. Um, and reverse diet will pretty much will allow you to start gaining. It'll pretty much help you wake up your metabolism again, uh, start building muscle, but not putting on a, a ton of unnecessary fat after you've just lost so much. And then from there, you I would just go into a lean bulk. It's just bulking, but not eating like a pig and, you know, overdoing it to the point that you gain that, you know, extraordinary, extraordinary amount of fat, you know. Bodybuilding snacks, um, I pretty much eat every two hours right now, so if I was to snack, I guess I'm always snacking in a way. Um, you know, I feel like bodybuilders, we snack. Snack, I mean, what, snacking is like eating a small meal. I don't snack, I have six full meals right now, it's only gonna go up. I'll probably in my off season get to eight meals a day with what my plans are for this upcoming year, so uh, there is no time or room to snack. <laughs> Should I focus on building muscle, losing fat, or both to prepare for top surgery? So top surgery is for trans uh, men specifically, if anyone doesn't know what he's referring to. Um, if you feel like you have a lot of fat to lose, I would actually definitely focus on that because um, when they do top surgery and if you have a loose skin, it'll create like little folds when they do go to do your top surgery. So definitely the leaner you are, the better for the surgery uh, because your results will look better. So definitely focus on that for now. And then after you've recovered, look into, you know, like a lean bulk. Which top surgery did you have? I had a keyhole with Dr. Bartlett in Boston. How was your first experience at the gym? Any tips for beginners regarding gyms? Um, I was pretty nervous like anyone would be, but you know, I've really always been a very gung-ho person. So if I set my mind on something, I'm gonna do it. I don't care like what people think of me in the process. So um, a little nervous, but once I got there, it was really nice. Honestly, everyone's really nice. Like everyone kind of just minds their own business. I think people, think others care more about what they're doing than they actually do. Um, that's just in your own head, really. Everyone's there, like, you know, working out, probably, if such, especially if they're doing legs, I promise you they're not focusing. If they're doing legs correctly, they're not focusing on what you're doing at all. So, just do your thing, relax, no one cares that much, and if they do, then, like, do, if someone is that focused on what you're doing, do you really think that's the type of person that you should care about their opinion, you know what I'm saying? So just. Um, tips, don't worry about it. Go there, do your thing, it's okay, you're gonna make mistakes. Make the mistakes in the beginning and do it safely. Make the mistakes smartly and safely and you know, you'll be fine, enjoy. Do you know any vegetarian bodybuilders? Do you think you can get the same results? Uh, I don't know off the ha top of my head any vegetarian bodybuilders. Uh, there are a lot of, like, okay, this is my stance on it. A lot of b bodybuilders are going vegetarian, but you have to understand to that point, they didn't build their muscle being vegetarian. They just chose later in their careers to be vegetarian. Uh, I do not believe that if you took two very skinny individuals and placed one on a vegetarian diet and then one on a you know standard bodybuilding diet, that the one that was going vegetarian route would build the same amount of muscle mass that the one on the non-vegetarian diet would. Uh, there are many reasons why um, plant a lot of plant-based proteins don't have the full amino acid profile that meat does. Secondly, even if it does, because a lot of people argue and say, okay, well, there's a lot of vegan protein plant whatever powders that have the full amino acid profile, but your body doesn't digest and absorb it the same. It, it's, your body's extremely intelligent and it, and it recognizes that it isn't meat. So when it goes to digest and absorb, those amino acids, it's the absorption rate and quality of the absorption is nowhere comparable. And there's a lot of also, um, 
naturally found uh, minerals within meat, especially red meat like zinc, that you're not going to find in plant-based protein. People will argue that you can supplement with zinc, but I do not think the absorption of supplements is the same as whole food ever. That's why I always say whole food is king because your body will not absorb a supplement like it does whole food and the quality specifically is not the same, especially if you like you get like a quality like meat it's not if, if you get like a quality beef it's not the zinc in that is definitely gonna absorb better than a capsule made in a lab cheaply and fast video games uh yeah i used to way more than i do now I'm, i love medieval games so like skyrim and things like that uh skyrim assassin's creed uh yeah i used to a lot but not anymore Foods do you recommend for building muscle and recovery? All of them. Like, you need the fats, you need the carbs, you need the proteins. Um, you know, especially for proteins, again, I'm, I feel like I'm very redundant, but protein quality is really important. So the protein from a you know, piece of chicken or a piece of steak is not going to be the same as the protein from a potato. I'm sorry. So you want to, and all, like also, for example, like tilapia. Tilapia is a fish that's a bottom feeder. So, um, what, what, whatever the food that you're getting is eating, that kind of will further down the line dictate the quality of the meat. Like tilapia is a bottom feeder, it's a scavenger, so it's not. It's great for cutting because it's very low fat and a lot of volume, uh, you know, per like it's, but like it doesn't have any minerals or vitamins in it. And again, they're a bottom feeder, they're eating garbage, so you're kind of eating what they're eating, which is kind of gross if you think about it. Uh, same thing for egg whites, I love egg whites, I eat egg whites like, every day so I'm not trying to say I avoid them but from a nutritional standpoint they don't really have much either um, that's why whole eggs technically are nutritionally better but it all really depends on what your caloric needs are at the end of the day and uh, definitely again high protein I would say moderate carb and then moderate fat okay guys that's gonna be the wrap-up for my first Q&A if you enjoy this please leave a like subscribe and let me know what you guys want to see next or if you'd like me to do another q a i enjoyed this hope you feel like you got a little better idea of who i am as a person which is pretty much the goal of this video and yeah guys bye